Have you seen a bunch of camping videos online where people are camping out of their trucks, their cars, their vans, and wondered, hey, I have a car, can I do the same thing? Well, if I could do it in my Mini Cooper Countryman, you can probably do it too. Today, I am gonna be showing you how I built a sleeping platform in my 2015 Mini Countryman and how you could do the same thing in whatever small car you have. I'm gonna be going over different configurations depending on what kind of small car you have and what the layout of that car is. I'll also detail what I like about this setup, what I don't like, and what I might change going forward in the future. What I might change aside from just buying a sprinter van. So this is my beloved 2015 Mini Countryman all 4 S. It is a all-wheel drive little car with a six-speed manual and a turbocharger. It's very quirky and it's very divisive. Some people love it, some people hate it. I, I get mostly hate, but there is some love for it and I, and I love it. It's super fun to drive. It's got really good handling characteristics. It's got a little bit of clearance, so it's good for deep snow and the Halidex all-wheel drive system makes a great little snow car. I wanted to figure out a way that I could take out the back seats and create a sleeping platform that I could also put camera gear on and et cetera when I'm working day to day. This is also my daily driver, so I couldn't have a full camping setup, so I wanted to make it really simple, as cheap as possible, as simple as possible, and something that is kind of convertible depending on what the needs are. Hey, what's our next, what's our next filming? There is a car that I want. There's Silver 4Runner. It's like a little lift and some like off-roady wheels. Mm. So your build options are gonna vary depending on what type of car you have and what type of layout it has. There are a couple different build options. Mine was remove the back seats and create a flat platform while pushing the front passenger seat as far forward as humanly possible. This allows for a decent trunk space and a bit of sleeping area if you have the right layout and the right length, and it also depends on how tall you are. If you're any taller than me at 5'10", you're probably not gonna fit in here very well because I barely fit. The other way is to remove the front seat and possibly back seats, create a flat sleeping platform that goes from your glove box to the rear of your car. This is gonna work really good for any type of sedan or hatchback or anything where you don't have a ton of room. Every car is gonna be different, so you need to figure out the layout that works for you. Come here, bud. Stay. Roll over, do you wanna go back in the jail? So what are all the tools and materials that I needed to put this together? To create the actual platform itself, I purchased a four by eight sheet of three quarter inch plywood. You could probably get away with less if you wanna cut down on weight, but it will. So once I had my four by eight sheet at Home Depot, I got them to cut that down to, I think it was three and three fourths because that's the length that I needed for my specific car. So the other tools and materials that I purchased from Home Depot were for one, a jigsaw. I bought the cheapest jigsaw that I could find. I actually found this at Canadian Tire and I bought some new teeth for that so that it was a little bit smoother going through. It was still kind of a piece of shit. I recommend getting a decent jigsaw if you think you're gonna use it again. I had a corded circular saw, so I wanted to buy a 60 tooth blade. I think the more teeth, the smoother the cut, so take that into consideration when you're cutting the plywood. If you have less teeth, it's gonna be a bit of a rougher cut, and then you're gonna have to sand down a lot more of the edges. I had an impact drill already. I needed this to, well, it made it easier to take out the seats and then also to put in the screws. I got three fourths inch, one inch, and one and a half inch wood screws. So I also got 60 grit and 110 grit sandpaper. I already had an orbital sander. I would recommend getting 220 grit sandpaper. It's just a little bit better to get it really smooth and you it just, it makes the, the finished product a lot nicer. We've got four different gate door hinges, two smaller ones for the top headrest folding part, and then two larger ones for the hinge part in the middle of the build. And I also got one two by eight piece of wood that I used to very crudely make blocks to hold everything up and kind of, you know, measure it out for supports throughout the vehicle. I also got a memory foam topper that goes over two sleeping pads that I had. I inherited these sleeping pads from my grandpa a long time ago. They're old thermorests, they work great. Uh, you can make some other type of solution. Maybe in your car, you can buy a specific blow up inflatable, whatever type of mattress. The memory foam is not enough and also, I found that the sleeping pads aren't enough on a really hard flat surface. So how did I actually build the platform? So it all started with me coming up with the idea to do this and then I basically measured every area that I could possibly use in the back and created templates, kind of like little, call them engineer drawings, but I am not an engineer. Once I had this all figured out, I created a template. I used one of those foldable kind of science experiments things from Michaels. I took that, put that in the back and just kept measuring it and then cutting it and then using a Sharpie. And I had to do it quite a few times to get it perfect. Once I had that outline of the side of my vehicle, I took that and I put it on my plywood. From there, I cut the plywood. Both sides of my vehicle were the exact same layout and dimensions. You should measure this before doing anything. But then I just took the template on both sides, measured the longest width and cut there. It was a little bit of trial and error. I am not a carpenter by any means, so my measuring is, is pretty terrible. And you know, I was kind of figuring this all out as I went, but it worked and it turned out half decent. Once I had my fit in structure, I cut the plywood in half so I was able to fold it onto each other so it was easy to take out and put into the car. This isn't really necessary depending on how your car setup is, but I just found it was easier and then I could fold it up when I want to store it so it's a little easier to store as well. I then attached the hinges on 
the exact point so that it folded nice and evenly open. I sanded all of the edges of all of the pieces of wood to make sure that they were all smooth and there was no sharp edges that were gonna be just ramming into the car. I also created a flip down headrest with the other hinges and another piece of plywood that I bought. I didn't have to cut this plywood, it actually fit perfectly for my needs. And then I just put it on and now it hinges down with the support. To make sure everything was supported in levels, it took a little bit of trial and error to figure out the right place to put the supports and the right height to put the supports to measure that all up. I made these out of a two by eight and, and some other scrap wood. Like I just put it together, it's pretty straightforward. I then stained the wood with a clear stain so that it would protect it from some of the elements. I don't totally know what stain does, but I know it helps protect the wood. The entire build took me about a day and a half, give or take, a couple cocktails. It was really easy to do. I think almost anybody, if you have the proper tools, can do this. Still cost me around $300 Canadian with the building materials, which I thought was a lot more than I was gonna spend. And if you don't have the tools, definitely just borrow them because if this isn't something you're gonna do often, it's kind of a waste of money. So try and borrow as many tools as possible. Honestly, I complain about the amount of space in here a lot, but for what it is, there's quite a bit of room. Like, it, it works out pretty well. My biggest thing is I would like another couple inches of leg room Room. I basically have to sleep on a diagonal right now. So what I think I'm gonna do is take out the front seat, put in the back two seats, and then sleep straight back. Might work, might not. I don't really know yet, and I might create a different structure to do so. I like building things, so it's kind of just a fun process. But right now, it's not perfect. And the other problem is, as you can see, once I'm in there, there's no room for anything else. So where this bag is, I normally keep a buddy heater. Uh, so if you're doing this and you have a small car, I highly recommend getting a Thule or some type of roof rack system. If you found this video at all insightful, please subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be trying to create a lot more content like this. See you soon.